Okay, now we're going to use our new definition of the natural logarithm to prove the standard properties of the natural logarithm. We have its derivative, we have that the natural log of 1 is 0, and we have its graph. However, here we're going to first start with a little theorem. Theorem says that if the derivative of f is the same as the derivative of g, then f and g differ by a constant. That is, f of x is g of x plus some constant. How do we prove this? And this only works if they're con continuous functions capable of having um, integrating them. Let's see. If f prime of x is the same thing as g prime of x, then that means that f prime of x minus g prime of x is 0. Thus, the integral of f prime of x minus g prime of x dx, its integral, would be the same as the integral of 0 dx, whose derivative is 0, uh, any constant, c. And this integral can be broken up. The integral of f prime of x dx minus the integral of g prime of x dx equals c. And at this point, it's pretty easy. The integral of f prime of x is the most general function whose derivative is f of x. Whose derivative is f prime of x? f of x. So f of x minus and whose derivative is g prime of x? g of x is c. Yes, there are constants in there, but we can mash all the constants together and end up saying that f of x is g of x plus c. What I'm saying is, if two things have the same derivative, then they are the same. Well, how am I going to use this? I'm going to say, look at the derivative of, let's say, natural log of x to the nth power. What's the derivative of natural log of x to the nth power? Well, we know that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and we've got the chain rule. So the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over the something times the derivative of something, n times x to the n minus 1. Well, we have n x's down below, 1 less n x up top. This is simply n over x. Ah, but... Now let's look at the derivative of n times the natural log of x. Well, if n's a constant, you just put the constant out front. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. That is also n over x. So now we're saying we have two things. Think of this as your f of x. Think of this as your g of x. Their derivatives are the same. What did that theorem just say? That theorem just said that the natural log of x to the n is the same thing as n times the natural log of x plus some constant. And because we know that the natural log of 1 is 0, we can even figure out what this constant is. Let's replace x with 1. This is going to say that the natural log of 1 to the nth power is n times the natural log of 1 plus c. 1 to any power is 1, the natural log of 1 is 0, 0 equals n times 0 plus c, looks like c is 0, and thus we can conclude that the natural log of x to the n is the same thing as n times the natural log of x. This is that beautiful ability to take exponents out front of a logarithm. Yay! That's really, really sweet. Let's try another one. It's a little bit sloppy, but let's try saying, let's look at the natural log of f of x times g of x. What is this? Well, what's its derivative? The derivative of the natural log of f of x times g of x is 1 over f of x g of x times the derivative of what's inside. We're going to have to use the product rule. It's going to be f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. And if I put, if I split it up, this is f prime of x g of x over 
f of x g of x plus f of x g prime of x over f of x g of x and the g's of x go away there and the 8 f of x's go away there and we are left with well this is how I'm going to look at it I'm going to say hey you know what this thing is this is the derivative of the natural log of f of x just think about it if you were taking the derivative of the natural log of f of x you'd say 1 over f of x times the derivative of what's inside which is f prime of x and you get f prime of x plus g of, uh, over f of x and this thing is the derivative of the natural log of g of x and by that theorem that we proved at the very beginning do i need another parenthesis i sure do by the theorem therefore by that theorem the natural log of f of x g of x is the natural log of f of x plus the natural log of g of x plus some constant c and if we let f of x be the same thing as g of x be just 1 we are going to see that 0 equals 0 plus 0 plus c therefore c is 0 what have we concluded we have concluded i'll say thus again i love the word thus 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 the natural log of f of x g of x is the natural log of f of x plus the natural log of g of x or to put it in the notation that people are more familiar with the natural log of x y is the natural log of x plus the natural log of y another one of our standard properties of the natural log the third one that tends to go with those last two is the natural log of x over y but we don't even have to do it again because watch this this is the natural log of x times y to the negative one power we've just proven that the natural log of things multiplied is the natural log of each of them separately added and we've said that if you have an, an exponent you can put it out front so this is the natural log of x plus negative 1 out front, natural log of y, which is the natural log of x minus the natural log of y, and that is your standard when you divide, you subtract. So, quick recap, what have we got? If we define, if we define the natural log of x to be the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Natural log of 1 is 0. The graph looks like this. And we have the natural log of x to the n is n natural log of x. The natural log of x y is natural log of x plus natural log of y. And the natural log of x over y is natural log of x minus natural log of y. And that is enough, I believe, for one video.